We're here in Columbia, Missouri with Shane Garrett of Garrett Painting, the premier painting contractor in mid-Missouri. America needs craftspeople, good, honest workers who love working with their hands to make stuff look good. I'm Torlando Hakes. And I'm Andrea Lutz. And we're on a mission to find top-of-the-line tradespeople and to hear their story and to see just what a life in the trades looks like. This, this is, is Finish Work. Andrea, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. Andrea, I'm Neil. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming. So this is our spray booth over here. Um, I want to see that. We've been spraying uh, a lot of water-based stain on this pine. Yeah. We've had about four or five stacks that size come through here. So it's really brown right now. We're kind of in the middle of that. Sure. Look at this sucker. We got two of those. We got one for in here and we got one for the on-site spray yeah. um, of the boxes. And the what, what kind of gun do you run on? Torlando, don't get to asking me technical questions. <laughs> yeah. so I don't know. I mean, I just don't. He was just trying to sound like he, <laughs> yeah, was, no, he was really trying to know. It's that, it's that, that gun that's it's in the bucket the down there. there. <laughs> now this is a cool, this is a cool gun. Yeah. Yeah, it's a nice little setup. I'll say that it has a little more square footage than mine. <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> you know, I've got a good core of people that um, really treat this like it's their business. They have a lot of, they have a lot of pride wrapped up into what we do. I mean, we 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 bill ourselves as as the best painting company in Mid Missouri. Yeah. The guys honestly believe that we are the best painting company in Mid Missouri, and they enjoy leaving the job with their head held high every day you know you don't have to go oh homeowner was pissed because right, we did right. some shady stuff today or oh the boss told me to put one coat on but man, we're supposed to get two coats and you know there's a lot of that that goes on in this yeah. industry okay. and, and they really enjoy the fact that we we give a good honest product how do you get the buy-in because it's it's your name on their shirts how do you get the buy-in behind your name it is giving them ownership over the projects and not micromanaging them, um, letting them know you believe in them and that you trust their decision making. And when you tell a man, this is your job, this is your job, you're responsible for the people that are on this job, you're responsible for the finished product on this job, um, you have to choose the right people, that doesn't work for everybody, mm -hmm. um, but it just seems like we attract people that, that want to do good work and want to feel good about what they're doing every day. Uh, what did you say, Andrea? Try harder. I trust, I tr <laughs> no, you oh, said, I know oh, you'll make the right decision. I know you'll make the right decision. <laughs> I've kind of picked up a little word track from Torlando listening to one of his podcasts. You know, I used to say people will come in and say, hey, we're having this issue. And I'm like, well, you could do this, this, and this, or you could do this, this, and this, or this, this, and this. You know, you figure out what you think is going to be the best route to go. But what I learned from him was just to simply say, well, what do you think we should do? And just... And now I heard that on yeah. one of your podcasts and you were like, I, I don't know, what do you think you should do? And they'll almost inevitably have that answer. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's do that. Yeah. 99% you know? of the and time. And then you don't have to I'm sell it. Like, yep. No, you don't have to sell it. You don't have to be combative or yeah. like disagree with them. You're just yeah. like, awesome plan. Yeah. I mean, I'm, you know, yeah. I'm the business for you. Let's get it done. <laughs> All right, so guys, I've got some uh, really cool projects lined out for us to go look at. We've got three exterior projects to see today. We've got a really cool pavilion project over in Copperstone. We've got an exterior repaint going on off of Route K and a really neat pine siding project where we've done the four coat Sansen system, um, which is what's being done to these things in the shop and then they're being delivered to the, the project for installation. So I think we're gonna have a good time. And uh, let's, let's go get to it. Awesome. <laughs> so they've done a huge uh, remodel project on the outside of the house, on the exterior in the backyard. They've built some pavilions and a lot of outdoor areas um, on the front. We redid all of the uh, cedar woodwork and all the gable. Yeah. Um, all the posts, and we and we redid the front door too with a with a gel stain finish. So, 
That door went through two puppies. Oh yeah. They two puppies. yep. It, they scratched the door handle and the, all those lower panels on the right hand side yep. up. Um, it, it was just bad. We had to take it down, take a few of those areas down to complete raw surface and start over. We refinished all the ceilings out here and all the wow. posts. It's a, we used a solid color Sanson uh, system, which is a new uh, they're a Canadian based company, high end exterior uh, wood coatings. A single coat? How, how did you? Two coat. Two coat. Two coat, solid color stain. No clear coat on top of no it? No clear coat on top wow, of it. Wow, it's got no. a great finish. Is it the yeah. SDF? It's the ENS. ENS. Yep. Two coats the ENS. <laughs> So out here, we had an existing tongue groove ceiling that was um, stained uh, semi-solid dark mahogany and there was a they had to put this light track in here and put lights in over here so they pieced in just sections of it and then what we had to do is we had to match that center section to the old existing stain and then put our new system on top of it so this has actually got some sections of it have three to four coats of stain on it they just put this whole screen system in and they put this new floor the new floor down we can cruise on downstairs if you guys want to go that way Actually, I started as a finish gardener before I was a painter. Oh, were you? And that's what got me into finish work. That was like, I got out of high school and bounced like, I tried working for a commercial plumber. I worked for a roofer. I worked for a framer. I hung gutters and hung siding, um, built utility trailers for a while and just kind of bounced around and didn't really enjoy any of those. And I answered an ad in the newspaper uh, for a guy named Carl Hardesty who was hiring finished carpenters. And I had no experience in finished carpentry. I didn't even really know what finished carpentry was. This was in the late 90s when there was 10,000, 12,000 square foot houses going up in Columbia left and right. Um, so Carl had the kind of finished carpentry business where you would go into one of these houses and you would just be there for months, you know, building staircases and crown molding and columns and beams and all that kind of stuff. And uh, day one, he handed me a coping saw and a 10 inch piece of crown molding and showed me how to cope it. And uh, I hung crown molding for a month. That was the first job I ever started at where I felt like, oh, this, this feels right. This feels like a fit to me. To be able to go into an unfinished room and, and create all that beauty and, and to be able to get things looking just right and be able to be afforded the budget and the time and the patience to be able to get things looking just right um, and then to walk out of there and like, wow, look at what we did, you know, um, and to see the, the homeowner's reactions and the customer's reactions to that. And as I fell into painting, it was the same feeling, you know, being able to go into rough, unfinished areas, create a lot of beauty really quickly and to make these huge visual changes to an area or a room or a house or whatever. Um, just intrinsically to me, it just felt really good. You said that your personality tested really high in aesthetics. Yeah. And both finished carpentry and painting and coatings, that's all super aesthetic, right? Yeah. It just feels natural to me. It's my happy place, you know? And I'm a house geek. I love houses. I love walking through. I mean, that's the best part of my job is to be able to look at the most beautiful homes and and uh, be able to be a part of creating all that beauty and, and um, it, it just feels good. It's a lot of fun for me, you know, that's the best part. When you guys are, and maybe both of you, when you have a new guy coming in, when, you know, what is it like for you when they get it? Like you guys, like you just get it, they feel natural. What's it like for you when you see that happening? I get excited, you know, I, I like people that buy in. If somebody comes in and gets it and really enjoys the high level of quality work that we're doing and, and that, that fits for them, that's exciting to me. Um, cause, cause I'm always looking for new, new team members that, that can work within our philosophy and our, and our values. Um, so that's always fun. The one I know is whenever I can walk in and that guy has made it there before I got there and, or I maybe, you know, got, have gotten them started something and I'm on the phone talk or talking to the homeowner and I go in there and that guy has already started doing something 
that he should know at that point where they, that's what he's supposed to do, that's the next step, and I didn't have to tell him. That's when I know, okay, this guy's he's picking it up. This is when I can start giving him stuff like, here's some top cut, you know, here's here I'll show you how to spray some stuff. You've you've got it at that point. Now you're ready to start learning and or you know for me to teach you the next step. To define get it for me is buying into the culture of our company more than enjoying their actual trade or what they're physically doing all day. Mm -hmm. We're a little old school. You know, you come in, you show up early, you work hard, you do your job, you don't complain, um, and you, you've got a team that's counting on you, and you, you want to be that guy that everyone wants to say, hey, I want Sean on my job. He works hard, he's got a great attitude, he, en he enjoys being a part of, of what we do and coming together as a team and, and accomplishing projects that are sometimes very difficult, you know, for on many different levels, whether it's a um, time restraints or, a, you know, a difficult scope of work or physically laborious work. Uh, but for them to, to buy into our culture that, hey, we all pull together and we do what we got to do to get the job done and make sure the customers are happy and for them to be proud of where they work. It's not a skill set thing for me. It's it's a it's a culture buy-in, and you know I can invest in this guy. I can take thirty minutes and explain some to him, and I haven't wasted my time because this guy's going to be here in five years because he enjoys what he does and he likes to be a part of this thing. So this is an exterior project we're doing. It's uh, cedar siding. Yeah, cedar. It's about 20 years old. I think. I think we are the. This is the third time it's been painted. This is Daniel. Come over here, Daniel. I didn't want to interrupt. Yeah, Daniel's been with me 13 years. All right. Yep. It's not unusual to come pulling up on the job site and see Daniel jogging across the yard with a step ladder. Still, yeah. after all these years. You want to walk us through and show us what you got going sure, on? Sure, absolutely. Been working on a lot, trying to focus on staying out of the sun uh, because everything just doesn't cure properly in the sun. Uh, you get things that are drying too fast for you to work with. Uh, just yourself in general getting overheated sometimes in the sun. So we try to work in the shade as much as possible. That being said, this side has been giving us uh, quite the challenge because it's in the sun most of the day. Yeah, having to work the sun around the house and know you know, we gotta get there in the morning and get this area done by 10 because we know the sun crests over. Okay, we got all that prep. We're gonna start putting coatings on this other side now because it's in the shade. And being able to stage and intelligent, intelligently work yourself around a project like that, it, it takes a little bit of thought, you know. Yeah. You guys but keeping it the same color? It is going the same color. Okay. They just wanna freshen it up. Of course, to go in with a new product, we've got the Aura which we're using, which is gonna should hold up a lot better for them over time with the color nice. uh, not fading away. I mean, this is real deal cedar siding, and and, and I, I don't have to tell you. Cedar's yeah. great. It is crazy expensive now. It yeah, is, it is to replace any cedar. Yeah. So, but it's fabulous. It's a it's great product. Like it holds up. Time. I mean, with all the new stuff they come up yeah, with, and all these good. new siding products. I love cedar. Those th that siding that you look at that's that's yeah. 20 years old, 25 years old, and still looks in great shape. Mm -hmm. It's usually cedar. Yeah. You know? What's up, Kyle? Man, you're looking good today. So this is a pretty typical higher-end subdivision in Columbia, Missouri. I thought this would be interesting because of the, we're basically putting a, a furniture finish on this siding and it's got some really interesting geometric, you know, it's like side angle slanted siding and stuff. So, and you can kind of see before and then, you know, the new product. How's it going? Good. Matt Muzzy. Nice to meet you. I'm Orlando. Orlando. Hey, I'm Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Nice to meet you. How are you? Not too bad. You're good looking as ever. 
I see you show up on a job site finally. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, this is the old, and they're tearing all of this stuff off. We are uh, refinishing all these pine uh, oh, tongue beautiful. and groove boards in the shop and then bringing them over here. Oh, I love it. To get them rehung, and then we're applying the sealer coats in place. I want, can I go up and touch it? I want to feel what Absolutely. it feels like. Absolutely. <laughs> is that a weird thing to ask? <laughs> this is actually, it's a four coat system. Yeah. You know those, those stacks that we had uh, there, and you had one stack to the left, and there's tape on it that says sanded? and there was another stack to the right that says bad. Yeah. We are culling probably, I would say, about 40%. And if it's got a knot, a crack in the, in the tongue, any sort of deficiency in the wood or, or, or failure or breakage or just a loose knot, they're getting culled and sent back. So we're, we're culling out about 40% of the boards and using only the very best ones. Matt, how did you get into this line of work? I uh, just started with my own projects some 22 years ago and just started from there pretty much and next thing you know here you are. Yeah? So, what were you doing before then? Uh, I actually worked for, uh, for a major railroad and it was uh, I had a lot of downtime. Okay. So I was able to get, squeeze in my own projects in between there and then it started being projects for other folks and you know like I said here I am now here 22 years later. Yeah. Running our own, running our own remodeling business, and what you can't do it without having all the right people, though. Yeah, right contractors that help you out and stuff. So, yeah, Matt's big on research, like I am. When he's, yeah. when he's tackling something new, he does a lot of reading, studying, asks a lot of questions. I mean, what do we have? Ten conversations about this product before we decided to use this product. It wasn't just something that we jumped up and did. We talked to reps, we, we read literature, right. um, had many, many phone conversations about you know how we were gonna tackle this. So there was a lot of planning and research ahead of time. You mentioned just when we were at the last site, you know, we're in 2019 and things are always changing and that's one of the really exciting things and also one of the really scary things about being a business owner because there's products like this that are so phenomenal but you don't really know yeah. until you really give it a try and so it's like doing the research and then you know i guess we're gonna put our necks out there and give it a yeah. give it a rock and see how it plays out sure. and, and we're, we're the first to do that i mean we will jump up and dry i mean we'll do our research you, we'll I do our due diligence to. but i think you have, you have to, to, to succeed absolutely i think if you just stick your you know head in the sand and you just go Day in, day out. This is it. the way we've always mm -hmm. done it. Great things are going to go past you. Then you're just going to, you're, you're going to do business for a while and then it'll, it'll eventually just dry up because everyone else is going to pass you by. Yep. What do you do for fun around here? Construction. Construction. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I mean, people say they On love, a Friday they night, nothing like job, a job but, site. You know, I, I take it to the nth degree. I mean, if I'm not, I'm not doing it here, I'm doing stuff at our own house. You know, it's, my wife gets so mad at me. It never, <laughs> never stop. Oh, so. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. My husband yeah. could do more. It's, it, it, it'll be fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I got, some a, I got a couple of projects back at the house. You love it, you love it. I, I don't have a brush. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shane, I hope you sent us some pictures because I think like the, the end result, it's going to be stunning. No, it's going to be pretty remarkable once everything's up. Benjamin Moore supplier, this is where we buy the bulk of our paint. This is my favorite interior designer, Vicki. And I think with a talented color consultant, here's the thing. Vicki knows what that color is going to look like on the wall before it's on the wall. Yeah. So it's one thing to pick a color from a swatch. Yeah. And I've even had her help me with color selections where I'm like, hey, what do I do here? And she's like, well, do this color here. And I'm like, 
Heck, I don't know about that. Yeah, your front door color was the last thing we conquered, I think. Yeah, and then I go put it on. I'm like, he was like, what do wow, you think? And that like, looks mm -hmm. freaking awesome. I would have never expected that color to look so good in mass, you know. And it's that experience of seeing those colors yeah. over yeah. and over and over right. again, actually, it's you know, on the wall. Color, right. I love it. Yeah. I, uh, so, you know, I went to art school. Mm -hmm. And when I first started the painting company, you know, I just was just putting paint on, and I had a, a customer that said, it's Orlando you're in art school can you just help us you know and I was like yeah sure why not and so we just kind of looked through the colors and came up with this really nice scheme and they're like I know like I think you're really good at this like you should try charging for it and I was like yeah that's a really good idea that'll, that'll be fifty dollars <laughs> it quickly became you know our our, our value proposition you know mm -hmm. our, our the, the thing that separates us from other companies is the color and then that's where you know my company mm -hmm. name came from and so offering that for free to your customers I think is it's yeah a, it's a good idea you know it's a lot of liability I mean if you help a yeah. client pick a color and then you put it on the wall even though they've approved it and made final decisions if you assisted with that selection and it ends up going on the wall and they don't like it, it it's 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 on you. You right. know they're gonna, they're gonna go. Well, why'd you? Why didn't you tell me to put something different up? Unless you, know? you put it in your contract. Well, obviously, <laughs> yeah. So I like to have Vicky come in, so she can kind of take the heat for that. Yeah, for sure. My favorite. <laughs> this is uh, the siding project we were just looking at with Matt Muzzy. Um, these are the products that we're using. We did, if I remember correctly, we did two coats of the SDF uh, for the color, and then we did two coats of the clear ENS over the top of that for the protection. And coincidentally, the first project we looked at for the Clarvis, the, the pavilion, same stuff. We used all that on that one. So. What's up, Josh? This is Josh Turner. This is Big Mo right here, Corey. We've been working with these guys for since the beginning, probably 19 years, I guess. Uh, a long time. A long time. You can see they've always got an army of guys ready to mix stuff, so there's just never the, oh, we get we need two days notice to mix your order. I mean, I can hop on the phone and call in 60 gallons of three different colors and show up an hour later, and they got it ready for me. So that's, that's been a big, big help to us in, in doing what we do. So that's great. We just work on getting little close matches for, for refinishing cabinets. And then you got to get it approved. <laughs> <laughs> Looks good. We'll have to get a customer sign off though. Yes, customers got to sign off. And these guys are uh, stain matching wizards. You know, you go to a job, they've got multiple colors or multiple stains. Um, they don't have any old paint. They don't have any record of what it is. And you've got to figure these things out. So what we do, we gather it all up. We take it to Johnson's. We hand it to these guys and they figure it out for us. So. So, yeah, so that's the original paint store. It's hard to put into words how involved in the community this paint store is. They're they're ingrained into this community. They, you know, Johnson Paint and Decorating is Columbia. Columbia is Johnson Paint and Decorating. I mean, it's one and the same. And to have that kind of history and that kind of support from a local business like this has been a, a massive part of, of our success as a painting yeah. company. Once you kind of get these, once, you know, it took us about 10 years or so yeah. for them to, you know, really have the confidence to say, you know, Garrett Painting is, you know, they're gonna take good care of you. Um, definitely call them and, and you're in good hands. And once you yeah. have that kind of backing coupled with the service that they provide, you know, taking care of whatever we need, whenever we need it, I mean, um, we've definitely had the owner over opening up the store on the weekends from time to time when we need to get <laughs> something that we ran out of. Yeah, it works of, so. both ways too. It's like, you know, we don't want to give somebody a customer recommendation or a paint recommendation and all of a sudden the guy doesn't call them. Mm -hmm. And this, when I, when I give them their guy's number, it's like, I know it's going to be a follow through process and make sure that, you know, yeah. that's a problem we had with a lot of people and they soon drop off the, yeah. <laughs> off the recommendation list. So how many gallons of paint a year do you guys think you sell here? Really, it's hard to say. I mean, I know probably we buy probably one and a half million uh, dollars worth every year just from Ben Moore, mm -hmm. and then that doesn't include you know this side of the business, which is growing constantly. 
when you're sending your clients up the paint store to pick colors yeah. or to you know to have a, a classy place for them to walk into, that's, it's, yeah. that's it's really real. Helps. Yeah, yeah. Sure. and that's the thing. That's the thing with so many Ben Moore stores is that they just have a lot of them just have that history. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got a I've got a rep whose grandfather worked at our store, you know, sixty years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, just like. You know, it's just it's just history, and, and it's it's really awesome. So um, we're kind of at the end of the workday here. So everybody, you can see all the vans are out here, and the guys are showing up at the shop, unloading tools, loading up tools for the next day. And uh, you know, a big thing I like to push is you know your team huddles. You know, you get your little five-minute team huddle in the morning, your little five-minute team huddle at the end. And I, I try to really ingrain in the guys and coach them to, you know, it's the end of the day, take a little bit of time. Think about what you're doing tomorrow. Think about, you know, what tasks you have, what tools you're gonna need, what products you're gonna need. You know, what's the game plan for tomorrow? You know, discuss that with your guys. And so if you just take five or 10 minutes and think about what the next thing is and load your van up at the end of the day and make sure you have all your products ordered up and everything ready to pick up. Just that five minutes of planning at the end of the day could save you two hours of hassles tomorrow morning and, and make you a lot more productive. I love that. I try to do that before I go to bed at night. Yeah. You know, kind of download. Yep. Think about everything that's happening the next day, kind of go through it, look at my calendar, and not to stress out, but just to like get everything out of my mind. Make and then I make a couple notes, actually I write it down, so I don't think about it while I'm trying to sleep. Oh, it's, it's clear that you have a, 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 a really well-maintained shop, a really great operation. I, I'm just noticing just almost in everything how important aesthetics are to you from like having metal frames for your signs, all of your signs, not just the little stick things. I mean, your your trucks are looking great, your shop is clean, your your workers are clean. I mean, this is this has been an education mm -hmm. for sure. You know, just like with anything, if you if you let stuff start to get run down, get beat up, you don't keep things looking nice and and, and looking organized, you you um your quality is going to go down and I don't know what it is but you know if you maintain your stuff and keep everything looking good everybody is more prone to do better work uh, for, for whatever reason that is. Like you said we're at the end of the day and the, the payoff is that we get to go to Garrett Acres. Right? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> we're going to have some good food. Should be a good time. Alright, let's do it. It's, I mean, it's, it's paradise, man. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's really nice out here. It's good to, you know, just have a place to, where you can relax and get away from all the hustle and bustle. So I don't, I'm not built for city life. <laughs> really. I mean, uh, I don't need all, like some of these bags. Are, you know, that's like the clothes. That's what you know. But this is a sleeping pad, and you put this sucker in there. You know, so that you're not going. It's inflatable. A friend of mine get me into hammocking as opposed to a tent, and. Uh, it, it's, some, it's just nicer, it's just better to be off the ground. And I just like it. You know, part of the, part of the craftsman life is being outdoorsy. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Yeah, if you get to be a real big, you gotta have tons of tiny bags. <laughs> Look at that pillow. That's nice. I've got even more bags, I'm not even pulling out all these bags. Yeah, I'll sleep like this. 
I'll sleep like a baby. <laughs> actually a new construction build yeah. uh, it was two years ago when it Scott did you do it yeah. as new construction you built it yeah we actually so uh, the Winkelmans lived next door and so they had this lot for 30 years Nice. but it was completely filled with uh, trees overgrown and then it actually <laughs> dipped way down and so it had a lot of issues they weren't sure they were gonna be able to build on it and so we determined that we could so they we built a house on this part of their lot and uh, cleared the trees and the one cool aspect that we'll show you when we get in there was a huge walnut tree that was right here in the middle uh -huh. and we were able to take that down and turn it into the mantle so, oh how cool yeah something kind of special yeah. for the homeowners yeah. but the one thing i wanted to point out was with putting this much energy into all these elements on the front of the house, we didn't want to have downspouts dropping down. And obviously you have to have downspouts to, for wa a proper water management. So one thing we did is we came up with this idea where um, this little couple here that was uh, our tinsmith made, um, basically the metal roof drops into there. And then before we built these columns, we core drilled down through the concrete and then there's a four inch uh, PVC pipe that runs in the middle of this uh, column and it goes out under the sidewalk and out and it drains around to the drainage system, the creek bed that we created on the side of the house. So that was all incorporated so you don't see any of this. How cool is that? I've never yeah. seen that done before. Well, it's kind Totally of a, ingenious. It was a little bit of work because you don't want to dump a bunch of water into a column without having 100% you know certainty that it's going to find its way out. So what you can't see in there is a bunch of uh, really nice copper work yeah. that is soldered and it takes it to a BBC pipe so that there's absolutely no ways that it can have any moisture get into this you know wood column and and rot anything out. It's a little things you don't even notice that you had put so much effort into right just yeah. so you don't have to look at downspouts. And that's the thing uh, with a lot of construction is you put a lot of time into something that people wouldn't notice, but if you didn't, they would surely notice. Yeah. As you see, what we did is a lot of times we'll coordinate them with color. So we have, when we get in here, we can show you the different beams. We have fir beams, walnut, we have hickory, and we have mahogany. And then and we had to stain them all to be the same yeah. color with four different species of wood. So that's definitely a challenge. It's not easy because every wood takes stain differently. So that means a lot of work for Shane and his guys to get the, the different species of wood to accept the stain in the, the right tone. So you guys are nice and settled in. Yeah, and pretty and much. I mean, there's it. always little things that we need yeah. to do, you know, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, they, he, he mentioned that you had owned this lot before and were living next door and yeah. was it just a was it just a someday maybe dream like what? <laughs> well, we I wanted a house. Bob didn't really care. I wanted a house <laughs> where we had everything on yeah, the main house. level that that we needed, like you know, master bedroom, yeah. bath, you know, full bath, that kind of thing. So we started looking at houses and decided we really didn't want to move out of this neighborhood. So we had an architect come look at that house to see what we could do to get a bedroom and things on the main level. Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, we can do it, but he says it's going to be really hard to do." And he looked out the window and he saw this lot and he says, "Well, who owns that lot?" He says, well, we do. And he says, well, that's a no brainer. Just build what you want. So here we are. And when we interviewed Scott, it was like, it's very obvious that he was the one that needed to build this house. So this was the walnut from the tree that was taken down in the front yard when we built the house. And we wanted to have it simple yet elegant, have some detail on it. Um, 
and then we also incorporated these corbels these are uh, the same fur beams up here so we wanted to have this mantle tie in with the beams the beams being fur actually ties in with the exterior um, beam work out there, which that's cedar, which gives us a little bit better weather protection. Shane was able to incorporate all the beam stains with the, the hickory floor. So we got a pretty cool design element here in the master bedroom. Which oh, is the, the ceiling, the wood yeah. ceiling. Another one of my favorite parts of the house. We uh, did a full coat of uh, Fresh Start Acrylic Primer on all this wood, and then two coats of uh, Benjamin Moore's Advanced Satin nice. Finish. Yeah. So it gives it a nice soft glow, a really soft, oh, beautiful yeah. sheen, really uh, without does. being overwhelmingly shiny. Yeah, you can just, I mean, the, the color selection in here, the openness, it's Clean, perfect. It's fresh. perfect for yeah. a bedroom. Like you just want to be able to decompress, unwind, and I immediately feel that. Kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, absolutely. The light, the natural daylight coming in through these huge windows. Uh, gosh, it's just, it's just beautiful. Yeah. It's almost like a kind of a matte finish. It, mm -hmm. It's almost it's really nice. Mm -hmm. We actually use a nickel to to space them, and so with that small of gap. The trick is to not have it gummed up with paint. Mm -hmm. So obviously you could have everything pre-painted and then install it, but then you have nail holes and you have all those variations you're gonna have to smooth out. So they were able to have it finished on the ceiling without just spraying it and having all the, you can see the clean lines. There's, there's no paint buildup in any of the lines. Advanced Satin is definitely a, a thinner product, which is what allows it to level out really well. Um, but to spray that on a upside down surface and not have sags, it, it takes a, a high level of skill to, to put that finish on. And if, what's so impressive to me is that, you know, with the sheen being on a ceiling, any daylight that is gonna come in, if there are any imperfections, they're gonna yep. just glare. I mean, yep. you're just going to see any little imperfection. Mm. And, and there are none. You know, when you're doing a home that you're making these decisions, it's good to have somebody behind you that can remind you of the important things because you'll think you have, you like how things look, but living with it won't be so easy, but yeah. everything makes a lot of sense here. This is one of the, the coolest parts of the house in my opinion. I know, I was just looking at it, it's so beautiful. That the, the grout joints are actually little tiny pieces of marble. This is a cool little feature here, so again, Susan's way into her grandkids and so she wanted to have a little space for them and so we converted this little area that was an attic space but this is a, um, a little area for them to play keep their toys and just have like a little nook like a cave like nook so they can feel like it's their own space um, and then she wanted this door made so this is a little Dutch door which the main purpose is so the kids could do uh, puppet shows here. You can stand back here. Oh, oh he, he's not small enough. Uh, <laughs> you can't have that woman. What are you talking about? Beauty's on a skin deep. I can have whatever woman I want. And I'm gonna fight you. Oh yeah, well I'll fight you too, bud. Let's get ready. <laughs> the show <laughs> Small space. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. Yeah. Really appreciate you, you showing us around. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Good nice to see you. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, baby. All right. Let's go. Cool way of experiencing outdoors, I think. 
it it's faster, you know, than just like a regular hike. Yeah. So you get to see a lot of stuff fast. Live action. Yeah. <laughs> the breeze. I'm loving the breeze. Yeah. I was a motorcycle enthusiast in my 20s, in my early 20s. Uh -huh. uh, my dad was a big, you know, uh, motorcycle guy. He rode bikes his whole life. And it, ultimately, he ended up losing his life on a motorcycle. But he had always enjoyed, you know, traveling the country on that bike and that open air experience. And, you know, you got the road right beneath you. And eventually, I kind of got bored with that. And we, you know, we moved on to build a home and build a family. and. You know all those those fun and exciting things and uh so the jeep is a lot like reliving that you know you get that open air freedom you're close to the road you really get to feel a better perspective than when you're in an enclosed vehicle when you're driving down the edge of a mountain or you know when you were in colorado or moab or or somewhere like that that's when you know the the jeep experience really you know it, it really opens your eyes you're like wow this is like people do this because this is a super cool way to experience nature. We were like straight up in the water. Shane, what a great time. Thank you for showing us around your yep. town and around your job sites and your shop and your home. I mean, I think you have a really great thing going on here. Well, I hope you guys had a good time. You know, this is a... Uh, this is what we do here. We work hard, we play hard, we like to get outdoors and uh, show you guys a little bit of that Missouri hospitality. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Shane. No problem, man. Glad to have you guys.